up, guys? Friday, October 9th edition of the MMA Junkie Twitter Mailbag. I'm back to answer your questions. We got a great response again this week. Um, so really appreciate everybody that's sending their questions. Keep it up. But uh, yeah, let's let's just jump right into it. The first question pertains to uh, one of the more entertaining topics that occurred this week. Um, Darren Till offering up money to be Mike Perry's guest cornerman. Um, bidding war ensues and we've got Cam Soda, the adult service, getting involved. So MMA stock guy asked, do you think that the UFC will allow people to bid for corner spots? Would they even be allowed to stop this? Has Mike Perry created a thing here? And uh, the gif I sent out to ask questions this week was Mike Perry. So uh, I got a lot of responses pertaining to similar questions to what MMA stock guy asked, but um, it will be interesting to see. I don't know how much say the UFC has um, in terms of corners, but we have seen in the past them pre uh, prevent certain individuals from cornering. I believe Randy Couture was one of them. It had been reported that he was not allowed to corner his son, Ryan. Um, so while I thought initially it was a commission issue, the more that I thought about it, maybe it is something that the UFC can get involved in. As far as it getting replicated, I think 100% we'll see this more and more. I mean, even think about, um, you know, some, some uh, preliminary card curtain jerk fighter that's, hey, can make a couple extra bucks. I mean, somebody bids on it and they get in the corner and the whole thing pays for itself. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see this more and more. Um, Mike Perry certainly uh, not necessarily known as a trendsetter in MMA, but I think that he's he's onto something here and we'll see if the UFC uh, intervenes and, and stops this from going off the rails. Second question is also pertinent to a discussion I've seen a lot of online this week. It's coming from Lukian at Lukian Bell asks, why is Leon Edwards running and afraid of Hamza Chimaev? Russia emoji, wolf emoji. He's not. Simply put, he's not. I, I think it's pretty ridiculous that people continue to think that fighters in the top 10 of a division, top five of a division are running away from other fighters. No, it's not like that. And Michael Chiesa broke it down beautifully this week. If you haven't seen his Fight Island scrum that occurred a few days ago, definitely check it out on MMA Junkie. But he's speaking from firsthand experience. He's sitting in the top 10 at welterweight and he's somebody that people have circled as potentially Hamzat's next opponent. So for him, he's, he explained the difference between doing good business and being afraid. And doing good business is not taking a fight against a guy in which it's not gonna propel you up in the rankings and it's a high risk fight. So why would he take something like that? If he wins, everybody says, oh, you know, he beat somebody that wasn't proven. And if he loses, then people's, you know, he, he took a tough fight and he lost. So it doesn't make much sense for these guys to take this fight yet. I think that that is something to be said about taking your time up a division, I get it. Chimaev's got a lot of buzz right now, but Leon Edwards isn't afraid, come on guys. This next one's probably my favorite question I received this week from hardcore casual UFC fan who asks, who has the most left in the gas tank between Diego Sanchez, Robbie Lawler, Tyron Woodley, and Carlos Condit? Obviously a well thought out question. Um, I had to think about this one for a while, right? So what does it mean? What does it mean to have the most left in the gas tank? And I think that the answer is probably gonna surprise you. Um, I think gas tank, having, having something left in the gas tank means that you have that fire, that you're gonna go out there and you're gonna compete and you're gonna you know, give it your all and you're gonna still be able to compete. So with those you know, boundaries, I would say actually the one I think that has the most gas tank, most gas left in the tank would probably be Diego Sanchez, which is kind of wild to think about. And I know people probably think that I'm wrong with this, but let me explain. Tyron Woodley and Robbie Lawler have just looked very lackluster in their recent performances. I mean, Tyron has lost, I believe it's uh, the last 15 rounds that he's competed in, he's lost. Um, Robbie has not been able to muster up much success. Uh, he had the Ben Askren beat down before he got choked out, which was a glimpse of hope. But, you know, the RDA fight, he looked kind of lackluster. The Magni fight, he was never really able to get much going. Um, and then you got Condit, who, to his credit, he did win his last fight. But I still don't think that he shows up the same way that Diego Sanchez does every fight. Sure, Sanchez is not fighting the level of competition that Woodley is or Lawler is. And uh, up until recently, the, the competition that Condit was. But with that being said, he always brings it. He has a fire. He, he looks like in attitude, um, other than he's you know working out with Joshua Fabia now, he looks like somebody that, that's really trying to be there and do well. So that's why I picked Sanchez. That's a great question, a good way to end this. I appreciate everybody's questions. And uh, until next time, guys, take care. <laughs>